Well, my next guest is among the world's most celebrated stage directors. He is a leading figure in the Canadian avant-garde. He is acclaimed for his multimedia-rich theatrical presentations, including two Cirque du Soleil spectacles. His one-man show, The Anderson Project, has toured four continents. A playwright, filmmaker, and actor, he's perhaps best known on screen for his role as René in Denis Arcand's Jesus of Montreal in 1989. For these considerable efforts, he has received countless awards, including Officer of the National Order of Quebec, the Order of Canada, France's, France's highly coveted legion of Honor and the Hans Christian Andersen Prize for Outstanding Contribution to Music, amongst others. His latest artistic con conquest is the Metropolitan Opera, which premiered the first part of his truly innovative take on Wagner's Ring Cycle last fall. The second installment this April is one of the most anticipated arts events of the spring. Please welcome back to Q and live in New York, Robert Lepage. <laughs> Well, it's very good to see you again. Great to see you too. The last time I saw you was in in London, in the UK. We did that. Interview. It was in Vancouver. It was oh, that's a year right. ago you did for Vancouver the, as well for the Olympics. That's okay. You have other nice qualities. <laughs> What are my other nice qualities? <laughs> many, many. Oh, You're a very you. courageous right. guy, very elegant and very courageous. Courageous. Very articulated. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, you returned to the Metropolitan uh, for mm -hmm. the second installment of the Ring Cycle in roughly a month. Uh, any hard lessons you learned that uh, last fall that can apply to this next go-around? Well, not any hard lessons. I mean, uh, everything that was supposed to happen happened, <laughs> you know, in every sense of the world. Uh, of course, you know, I, I knew that there would be a lot of traditionalists and that I'd have to deal with the Wagner Society, you know, that, you know of course, that those are, I guess, the rites of, uh, of passing for any kind of new director that comes to New York and, and has to touch uh, Wagner in, in, in a way that uh, hasn't been touched yet. You're used to that at this point, pissing well, off the traditionalists. Of, no, not really, and, and I'm not looking for a fight, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I respect traditionalists, and actually, my production is very traditional on some aspects, so. The, the, tell me about this, that you've announced that you will use a 3D projection in your production of Secret, uh, Secret next uh, October. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a celebrated filmmaker, do you see projection technology as, as the next frontier in theater as well? Well, it, dep it depends what kind of projection we're talking about. Is that up until now, uh, people who've been using video projections in, in live performance often use it in a very decorative way. And it's often there as a kind of a gadget or it's very distracting because it's not really integrated. Uh, but now with all the new interactive technologies available, uh, it's very different. It means that actors could actually trigger images. They could trigger textures. They could so, so the projections are not just scenery or decorative things that are in the background. They're actually extensions of the performer's energy. So what we're trying to do uh, in the ring, in the four increments, uh, a lot of the images that you see, like you'd see a snowstorm at the beginning of Valkyra that we're presenting in a month from now, uh, and the, the, every snowflake uh, moves uh, with the velocity um, that, that comes from the orchestra pit. So anything that comes from the live music actually triggers the snowstorm. And that's where technology is bringing us. And that's interesting. When you, in, when you invite these tools in, when they become extensions to what the performance, live performance uh, offers. And do, you, do you think because you have this pedigree as a filmmaker that mm -hmm. film, working in film, changed the way you see theater? Well, yeah, it, it, it does. I think there's a, a kind of a, I'm kind of playing around in a space right now where I think we're in between spaces. It used to be that the, the technology and the tools uh, and the toys that uh, people in theater would use to, to tell stories and the the, the tools and the toys that, that people in film or recorded media would use to tell stories were so radically different. There was no way you could find any kind of compatible uh, interface. Mm. And, and I think now all of these things are pretty much comp compatible and, and there's starting to be a dialogue between the recorded world and the live performance. And more and more people go to, to cinema now to see movies uh, expecting uh, more interaction, expecting... Uh, 3D, expecting stuff that usually live performance gives you, and vice versa. People come to a live performance uh, asking for some kind of narrative 
way of telling the story that's close to what they know about cinema. I love thinking of you. You're, you're, you're such the consummate artist. Uh, and the way you think, uh, when, when we had that interview that I do remember in the UK, um, <laughs> you, you, you talked about <laughs> how you, 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 didn't, you have no strategy, you have no plan, you nope. just do what you love. And yeah. so if, if, if the multidisciplinary mm -hmm. world of arts that you have your fingers in is out there like a buffet, mm -hmm. uh, I love thinking of you picking what you're going to do, but you seem to be picking pretty consistently these days from the opera section of yeah. the buffet. Why, yeah. do you, what do you, why are you so seduced well, by because opera? Because I think it's the most interesting place to work right now. I mean, it'll probably change with time, but there's something about uh, the opera world that's very exciting. It's... it's it, I don't know what it is, if it's, it's HD uh, broadcast or it's, it's getting more and more accessible. Um, people are more aware of it and it's, it's the ultimate multidisciplinary uh, place to work. I mean, it, it's a great meeting point, opera of, of course, theater, but also of music, of literature, of architecture, of dance. You know, it's a place where all of the different uh, forms of expression meet and, and you don't have that in, in, in any other kind of... Uh, uh, art form. Of course, people say film, but film's not live, you know, and, and, and you, you do have that um, Olympian hmm. thing that comes with opera. That's great. It's, it's a sport. Opera's a sport. I mean, if you, if you, I don't know if you've ever worked or, or, or if you know any opera singers, but they're athletes. Right. Even if they don't necessarily look like athletes, but, but, they, but they are athletes. They're, they're, they're incredibly, uh, incredibly trained to, to, you know, belt out those, uh, this, these larger than life lose. emotions and yeah. sounds yeah. and all that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, very, it's Olympian. Huh. And it's very exciting. It's, it's, it's a sport. <laughs> uh, before I let you go, I have to ask you about this. I mean, you're so known for, I called you avant-garde and the, the esoteric kind of stuff you do artistically. And then you do these... This, these, these two forays with Cirque du Soleil, uh -huh. which some people might sort of interpret as Robert Lepage goes mainstream. Well, not necessarily. I mean, if you work with Cirque du Soleil, uh, one of the great challenges of Cirque du Soleil is that they, you pretty much do what you want to do. Uh, if it ends up being commercial, that's your, that's your problem. I mean, uh, you, you get a lot, of, a, a lot of leeway. And even in, in, in places like Vegas or Macau, where you'd expect there'd be a lot of artistic control from the presenter and all that, there's none of that. You, it's actually... You didn't uh, feel like you had to oh, be part of a exactly. franchise. Abs to absolutely not, no. And, 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 you're, and, and actually, what's, what's challenging is that, you know how usually you want to present a project to a producer or to a distributor? You'd have to say, well, it's a cross between this movie and that movie, just to kind of reassure them. You're going to compare what you're going to do and you're going to mix two big hits. In this case, that's exactly the opposite. They, they don't want to hear an idea that they've seen before or something they've done before. It always has to be something they haven't done. Of course, often it ends up looking like something they've done before because they have their system and, they, and, you, and you have to challenge them. But, but there's a lot of, uh, and it's a very exciting place to work. Uh, they, they bring a lot to you. And, uh, and what's exciting is, is also the audience you have access to. I mean, I'm, I'm a great, uh, you know, I'm very intrigued by what, audiences are about and, and how people say well, there's different audiences and you can't do the same, the same, you can't tell the same story the same way to different audiences. But you know, when I got to work uh, on a, a show called Ka for Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas, what was really great is that we had something like 80 previews because that's the mm -hmm. reality of Cirque du Soleil. You're going to do a show, you get 80 previews to get right. it right. It's about and 300 less than Spider-Man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But what's great is that on, you know, on the first preview, you get a room full of people with cowboy hats. You know, and you go, okay, well, that's going to be interesting how they react. And then after that, you get uh, a room filled of uh, uh, Chinese people who are, you know, all men with uh, a little thing Not wearing high my nays, tie way low. <laughs> right, and right. then the day after, it's the, uh, the porn convention in Vegas, right. and you hear all these porn stars. You know? <laughs> so, and that's really interesting as, as a storyteller, as a director, to actually deal like, you know, with, with audiences you never thought you'd have access to and to try to understand how that works. It's so fortuitous that we did the New York show at a time when you're here. Best of luck with the Met. Thank you. And I know you do, you've got more projects going on in Quebec City and Toronto mm -hmm. coming up. I thank you so much for the time here. Robert Lepage, everybody. Thank you.